This is the beginning of part two. Once again, Mr. Tedesco would like a chart on a separate worksheet that shows the weight of the student selected object on each of the five planets. So what you will have on the worksheet is one page that's going to be using this information on these two little tables. And then you are going to create, from this data, you are going to create a chart on a separate worksheet. So let's take a look at what your task is going to be. And let me close this up so it's closer. Mr. Tedesco has asked the master technology teacher for help in creating the spreadsheet. That's what you're going to be doing. Using your knowledge of spreadsheets, first, create a table reflecting Mr. Tedesco's specifications. This is a really important part of it. You are also to use relative and absolute addressing throughout the worksheet, the spreadsheet. This is your formatting that you need to keep in mind. Uh, you're going to include a column header for each of the five planets and that column header is going to be center justified and bold. You are going to create a row header for each of the four objects that is going to be left justified and bold. You are also going to include borders and shading. You will have single rule border for interior cells. Again, single rule border for interior cells and double rule borders for column and row headers. Okay, that's really important that you do. And 20% gray shading for the column headers only. In addition to that, you are going to express all weights to two decimal places. You are going to center the title of weights of objects on five planets, parentheses pounds, across cells A1 through F1 and you will adjust the widths as necessary so that all text is displayed. That means you don't want any of the text cut off. When you're working with the charts, what you're going to be doing is creating the formulas and ensuring, again, and we, we had this at the beginning, ensuring that, whoops, my little mouse died, what happened? Ensuring that any change to the table of conversion factors results in an automatic update of the conversion table and there we go we have our mouse back no we don't the baby disappeared isn't that weird uh, and okay um, you are going to use relative and absolute cell addressing you are going to ensure that an update to the weight of any object on earth is automatically reflected in the weights of the objects on other planets again you are to create a chart on a separate worksheet and you are going to display the weight of the student's objects on each of the five planets. Apply the following formatting to the chart. You want to add an appropriate title to the chart and make sure that you remember when you add a title to the chart, that title should explain what the chart is about. So that somebody can instantly eyeball it and see that um, that whatever chart you're using, what the meaning of that chart is. Um, it would be helpful to include a legend because that's also very helpful when you're doing a chart and also provide a one to three sentence explanation defending your chart selection in the footer of the worksheet. And though that is the task that you're supposed to do. <laughs> I can't turn it off because my mouse died. Isn't that funny? Okay, that's it and I'll just wait until the baby runs out. I be if I was a mouse. That is so weird. Let's see. Okay, I feel like I should sing or something. <laughs> From this point forward, you can just cut it off because um, it will be cut off automatically and then maybe my mouse will mysteriously appear. Until then, in the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to be toggling back and forth and um, actually creating the first worksheet so that you can see how to do it. And we are down to the last 34 seconds. Again, nothing important is going on after this point. And you can just click it off now and move on to your next tutorial. I feel like I should be a NASA scientist or something and be counting down. T minus 15, 14, that would be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, end.